Hey, my name is Kevin Davis. I know a lot of you out there are looking for jobs, especially if you're looking for a job in the culinary business. Kitchen of Champions at St. Vincent de Paul is the place to be. The Kitchen of Champions is a 12-week job training program. That means we're training people in culinary arts to prepare them for entry-level positions in food services and the hospitality industry. It's a starting point or a cornerstone for whatever you want to do. How many, how many programs in three months pack something so, down so much? Words can't explain how much I appreciate that. My name is Luis A. Corti III. My name is Melissa Crossley. Hey, my name is Kevin Davis. And I'm a very proud graduate and alumni of St. Vincent de Paul's Kitchen of Champions. I love, I love to cook. I've been, I've been fascinated with cooking ever since I was three. I used to be at the side of my grandma, tugging at her, you know, grandma, what's that? I would cook with my grandma. We would make holiday meals. We got to make things like sweet potato pie and turkey and greens. That's where I understood that I can make more than just simple meals. I can, I can cook for people and I can make them happy. I grew up in East Oakland, 69 Village. I'm a single parent of two. I do security for the city of Oakland at the library. I got connected through the program through one of my sisters. She was like, Kevin, you cook so much, but I'm so cheap. So she was like, you should just go to St. Vincent of Paul because it's free. I heard about Kitchen of Champions through a job placement program. I was looking for something that I can do that was exciting and fun and new. I used to think I was a failure. I was uh, involved in a, in a lot of criminal activity. Let's say I, 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 I look for a job and because of my background, I wasn't given a chance. Um, I'll get discouraged and then you resort back to what you're comfortable with. Not going to college and not having something that you've completed, I don't know, you can't really do anything. You don't have any experience. I wanted, I wanted a way out, you know? I wanted, I wanted some, I wanted to be able to break the chains. And I, be, I became part of uh, Cohort 34. So your first thought that you want to embrace today is that you have stepped onto a huge support platform. you have entered into an arena that has connections. Typically, our mornings begin where we come in and we pour to the kitchen for what we call production. The bulk of your time here is gonna be spent in the kitchen in production. We have a kitchen that just provides food for those who are in need, who might not have a home, who just might not have enough of a paycheck to get through the month. We use that as an ability to teach cooking techniques, as well as different cuisines. The classroom is split up into three teams. A reclamation team. A prep team. A production team. So we usually do like a protein, a vegetable, a starch, a pastry, a drink. Week one was like, oh my goodness, this is something new. I don't, I don't know how to do these cuts. I don't know this and that. I'm just used to chop, 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 let it go. You're gonna be learning how to hold a knife, how to use a knife, and how to cut most basic vegetables. First week was always hard, because you're learning. So we need to actually cut every piece as if our knife is guided towards the center. You gotta have this thickness equal to that thickness. And you want a perfect grip. Tate, hey, 2,000 dices later, you're gonna be good. It's not a perfect square. That's a good square, though. But like week six, it was like, oh, I got the flow now. It's good. I'm, I'm there. I'm doing my thing. When they're cooking with the help of volunteers, they produce enough food to feed at least five to 600 people daily. It was a great chance for me to burn some calories. Coming in, knife walking, 
Coming behind. Coming behind. Hot behind, coming out. When you have a lot of people to serve, you must move, and you must move fast and around everybody. So ginger, dry sage, oil, salt, and pepper. We need pepper. And once you get into the food and once you have a deadline, you begin to learn how other people work. And that becomes the cohesion. That becomes what glues everybody together. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hot coming behind. So turkey, turkey, potatoes, potatoes, and marinara sauce. When you see yourself push out a meal for 600 people and these people coming back and back and back and you see them outside and they saying, man, that food was good, thank you, sir. That's the best feeling in the world. I can't, I can't, I can't buy that. Especially in this community right here in West Oakland and right here in the Lower Bottoms area, this is where the most help is needed. And this program here, the Women's Center, the Man Center, this is like, this is, this is a big program within a bigger program. I'm just a, a small part of that. It was much more than just culinary, you know? I learned about, about interviewing. They gave me interviewing skills. They, they gave me socializing skills, you know? They helped me with my professionalism, you know? Elements that, that a person with my background, you know, needed, really, really needed. It's not just a technical skill support. We try to offer what we describe as wraparound support. Alfred is our, our outreach officer, and he's one of your huge resources in terms of any support that you might need outside of the program. Sometimes people need help with pg and &E, with trying to get rent transportation. Other boards have other resources on them, like jobs, like housing, like legal assistance. Another service we have is a homeless and caring court. If you have uh, certain misdemeanors, the judge will hear you from a compassionate perspective. Life is happening in the 12 weeks that they are here. People get displaced, they lose their homes, people have lost their cars. Programs such as the Kitchens of Champions allow us to really crack the nut of addressing chronic unemployment. We've had trainees who have, who have been, been incarcerated repeatedly. Lots of times if you face those circumstances, your spirit can get broken. We're helping people to be able to see within themselves the good stuff. The words can't explain how much I love Nick, because she's helped me out a lot. She knows what it is to be hurting, you know, and come from a negative place to a positive place. I, I actually went through the program myself uh, two, about two years ago. And I went through the program shortly after I moved from Jamaica under very difficult circumstances. The support I was able to get here to be able to shift my, you know, just make a transition, just make a very tran difficult transition successfully was huge for me. And it continues to inform where I come from in terms of how I see my, my service. One of the things that we look on is like resume development. Hi, how are you? Good, nice to meet you. A lot of times people just need resources like this to help them get to that next level. You owned your own business? Carpet cleaning. Carpet yes. cleaning business? I'll come up once a year. Okay. And, uh, and clean everybody's carpet. Recently, I've mm -hmm. just been an in-home care worker. I prepared meals. Okay. Played menus. I was incarcerated. Mm -hmm. I, I was like a good chef. Nice. I managed to run a kitchen of 34. Everybody uh, has a story to tell. That's what I want to bring out and get on that piece of paper. I do do my own catering, grilling, smoking, frying, grilling, chilling, and grilling. Grilling, chilling, and grilling. <laughs> yes, yeah. Kimbalicious, delectable dishes. That's right. <laughs> We also go to Chef Olives, uh, which is Kitchen on Fire. So I've been in the restaurant business for more than 30 years. It's one of the most uh, noble art that there is. He was so passionate and so knowledgeable. I'm going to teach him how to basically the chemistry of uh, what's happening with the flowers and the artificial leaveners and the water. Once they understand the chemistry of it, they usually have much less questions because the chemistry explained a lot. We host a guest chef series where we invite a local restaurant and a local executive chef to come and produce a 
high caliber, uh, fancy event. I cooked the duck for the guest chef. I scored a duck, rendered it, learned, learned how to do the gas streak for the duck, braised the, 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 the leg quarters. I mean, marinated the duck overnight, you know, with, with, with coriander, uh, fresh thyme, garlic. The, the people that ate said that, that was the best duck they ever had. And I mean, I was flattered because that was the first time I ever cooked duck. <laughs> we also have opportunities for our students to get out into the community to cater. We've participated in events like the Eat Real Festival, the Chamber of Commerce, Christmas parties, Waterfront Hotel, it's a rent record graduation. At first, we were rookies, and by the end, we were veterans. So I know you graduates know something about struggle. Amen. This is a town of hurting people. We have nearly 40% of our children in the Bay Area in one of the wealthiest parts of a wealthy country living in poverty. You are here to make a difference. I know that our love is greater than our challenges. From a fellow alumni, I want to say God bless you you know, and be the champions you are and go kick some butt in the work world. This is my first actual graduation. So being able to get that certificate, being able to get that little certificate of completion was huge. Our next graduate is Kevin Davis. <laughs> I just want to say thank God and um, thank my kids because every time I look at them, I know I have to get my butt up and come here. After you graduate after the 12 week program, not only do you get a job, you get job placement. I graduated the, the program, went into a fast paced environment and was up to speed like that. Didn't have a problem. I've gotten first and foremost job offers. There's 543 job training programs in Alameda County, but there's only a handful who actually do job placement. Over 70% of our graduates land jobs, and that number continues to grow. I have hired a lot of uh, th those guys in my kitchen. A good uh, person in the, in the kitchen is worth gold. I was at City Hall the other day for a meeting. Uh, went in to grab a, a bite to eat at a Mediterranean-style restaurant and one of the chefs behind the counter was a graduate from a class of 2010. And he said for the first time in his life, he was turning down jobs, and he's 50 years old. My passion for cooking is gonna take me all over. It's my dream to open a Spanish-Moroccan fusion with kind of like a French fine dining twist. I wouldn't mind traveling and maybe chefing on a cruise one day. If I, if I do start a restaurant, it's gonna be like uh, a Puerto Rican, which is Boricua, Boricua infused. I want to have food trucks next to community gardens so I can use their products. We can switch up today from Gala to tomorrow to South African to soul food. After that, I want one truck and then I want two trucks and then I want three trucks, but I was just start off with the one truck first. <laughs> Even if it's just a, me pushing around a, a grill and a chair and a, and a little table, I'm gonna have to do what I have to do. Most of the stores and storefronts that you see around the Oakland, uh, East Oakland, West Oakland area were all dominantly, predominantly black owned. As a young people, we kind of not seeing that image anymore. So it's time that we bring that back into the community so we can empower other young people to want to do something else. And when you see positive people doing positive things and, and getting money, it can't go wrong from that. Cooking is an art, period. I don't care what anybody says, food is creative, it's smell, it's taste, it's texture, it's everything. When you feed people, they can't fight. <laughs> when you when you fool, you don't want to fight nobody. You don't want to be arguing because you're too full. All you want to do is go to sleep or smile. Just come look it, come, come, just come one day. Either come in the line and get some food, nobody's judgmental. Come in, talk to Nick Ming, she'll help you out. These people that wants to help you, they want to give you information. If 
you like cooking at all, you should give it a try. I wish I had family members that would come and utilize these services. The entrenched pockets of poverty and uh, you know, just destitution that exists in some of the areas that we do serve might look differently over 10 years as more and more families or people from the family come through this program. George Sheldon, who's the Interim Director of Health and Human Services from the Feds, came out and he says, how can we make this program go to scale? I won't discourage you. I won't tell you no lie. I'm from the hood. I know that this is something that can help you as a person and as a human being for your community and for your world. I can't wait to see you guys either at my kitchen, working in my kitchen, or I'm working at your kitchen. So see me at my food truck, y'all know what I mean, Benny Bean. Right now, I gotta go off and feed some people. See you later. What's up, Brother John? Hey, Bum Bum. Hey, David, how you doing? What's up, Chef? That's one thing that Nick's always saying, like, tell him you cook lasagna, you know, real good. <laughs> Tips for aspiring cooks, learn all you can. Even if you have to go to one of your favorite restaurants and say, hey, can I work for free? Even just a few hours, you can learn so much. My cohort was off the hook. Nick keeps it real. You hear that, Nick? Nick, you keep it real. <laughs> My cooking tip is watch the scale. Do not walk away. Pace yourself and watch your fingers. <laughs>